Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Checking In with Tommy Ellis. I am your host, who else but Tommy Ellis. And as you can tell, I have, uh, I have shed the, uh, the quarantine beard. I, uh, I thought maybe I could hang in there with it through the end of this quarantine. But, uh, it was getting really, it was getting really shaggy. And it had a little more gray in it than I cared I have to look at. So it was getting kind of depressing, too. So, uh, today, today, my guest is an old friend of mine, a broadcast colleague, you might say, as he is the co-host of the Orals podcast. Uh, he is, uh... A man about town uh, always has his finger on the pulse of society. Uh, he is uh, a part of uh, dis uh, distribution of a magazine called Global Traveler. Uh, and in the wake of this pandemic, people are not globally traveling very much. So a magazine as such is not quite as, necess as necessary as it once was. Uh, he's also known to cover firsthand a lot of uh, conventions, sporting events, uh, wrestling events, all sorts of entertainment events, uh, and none of which are going on right now. So this guy has had a lot of his work cut uh, on account of the coronavirus. He's, of course being quarantined at home like everybody else and is trying to do his best to get through all of that. Uh, his name, if you don't already know, is from johngsbeat.com, which you can find online as your 316th source of pop culture nuggets. From JohnGsBeat.com, Mr. John Robleski. Uh, as I said, very good friend of mine. Uh, wanted to check in with him, see how he's doing, uh, especially with everything going on. Um, that guy has been on the beat for as long as I've uh, as long as I've known him, and now is a time where there's no beat to be on. You know, he can't get into. Uh, there's no C2E2, there's no Wizard World, there's no Days of the Dead, there's no Triple X Exotica, which sucks because I was hoping to get to go this year with that guy. But they never really pushed it on too hard because the thing kind of fell apart before we got there. But next year, next year, John G, I want in on that one. I want to do some interviews, I want to meet some people. I've got a list. So. Uh, that being said, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's hanging in there. Uh, I appreciate everybody checking in and watching uh, these episodes that I've been doing. Our last one with Cameron Rayfield was probably our most successful one, and I'm happy for that because she's a great girl and had a great perspective, I think, on what was going on. So good for her for being uh, number one so far on the uh, the ratings on this bigger podcast of mine. So, uh, that being said, tough act to follow. Let's bring on our good friend, Mr. John Robleski. So, uh, without further further ado, he's the man on the beat from JohnGsBeat.com, Mr. John Robleski. All right, I am here with Mr. John Rob Lesky. John G, how are you doing, my friend? I'm just a little disappointed I didn't get the usual pause. Well, this is. I know a, it's a different this, podcast. It's a but. different show, man. You, you know, hey, you're only going to get so much. You know, you're already getting a lot of attention on this, uh, <laughs> being the one being interviewed for a change here. So, uh, how, how is uh, how, how are you doing? How is your general health right now? 
my general health is fine. Uh, I am probably doing it, you know, about as good as anybody else, uh, bouncing off the walls on some days and other days I'm, uh, you know, relaxed. So, uh, you're here in the Chicago land area. Uh, why don't you tell people like where, where about are you located? I am just north of Chicago in beautiful Skokie, Illinois. All it's right. about I don't know, two miles north of Chicago. All right. Yeah. And uh, while it may be hard to imagine, there are people out there who might watch this and not know <laughs> what it is that you do. What so, don't I do? So why don't you give like kind of a, a brief summary on what you do with Global Traveler and then what Johnji's Beat is? Well, and, and you know, as some people know, my real job is with Global Traveler. I uh, I do like eight thousand things for them. I'm I write for them online. I do some and social what is, media. What is Global Traveler? Global Traveler is a monthly travel magazine aimed at the uh, casual business and or frequent traveler. Mm -hmm. They have a circulation of one hundred thousand across the world. And uh, yeah, I've been with them. They started in uh, two thousand four. I've been with them from uh, actually you know previous to that through the whole planning process. Um, I originally started as the distribution guy because that's my background, and I somehow worked my way into uh, into a little bit of writing. And then work my way into a little bit of social media work, uh, and that's pretty much where I am now. It's a little bit challenging because there's no travel right now, or it's not much travel, but there's no travel for me. Um, so you know, it's it's tough coming up with story ideas. But uh, you know, as as there's not a lot going on, then there's also different things going on, like the virtual world. You know, a lot of people yeah. are doing stuff online. Like and, what kind of, and when and on John G's beat, what do you? What kind of stuff do you cover on John G's beat? John G's Beat covers just about anything. It's, it bills itself as the 316th uh, yeah. best site for pop culture nuggets. So pretty much if it's anything that interests me or might interest somebody else, I, I go there and I write about it. Softball, football, wrestling. Yeah, you, you attend a lot of different conventions and things a like that. Artists, writers, all sorts of stuff. So uh, and you've been with I, me on several of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the reason I want to get all that out and clarified and everything is because all of that is being directly affected by yes. what's going on because there's no conventions, there's no sporting events, nobody's out of their house doing anything. You're right, there's very little travel going on for anybody, if at all. And, uh, you know, where does this leave you? Uh, it leaves me scrambling for things to write about. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, my world kind of crumbled in that respect. There's nothing for me. There's really nothing to cover. But, you know, then there's there's new things like uh, like I just wrote about uh, yesterday for Global Traveler that like the Chicago Wolves, the hockey team, they yeah. are they were playing out their season in uh, on virtual games. So they are eight and three in virtual games. Like uh, how, with, how do they have a virtual? What are they playing? Like NHL 2K or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's NHL 2K, but it's one of those, you know. Oh really? They, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then and they and they um, they um, broadcast them on Twitch, I believe. I'm getting confused over the various things. I think they broadcast yeah, them on it Twitch. Sounds, most video game stuff is Twitch, so yeah. Well, that's and cool. <laughs> yeah, and then they they also have a. Um, uh, a tournament for fans that could um, make their own teams and enter it. And it's like a, you know, a single elimination, some sort of tournament. So they're doing a lot of stuff to keep. Well, that's fans. a good idea. That's being innovative yeah. in, a, in a time of need. Sure. So, I mean, I'm looking for that type of stuff from, from, you know, anybody like I've, uh, I have a few interviews lined up this week. I have an interview lined up with a, a, a girl that does roller derby and she, she's teaching it virtually online. Um, wow. I have an interview with an artist lined up because she's doing uh, art online. So different things like that are try I'm trying to keep busy and trying to come up with interesting, somewhat interesting things to write about. So you're not completely off the beat then. No, no, I was for a while. You know, I mean, we all and when this whole thing I've never, is, I've never known John G to be off the beat <laughs> at any given time. In, in uh, you've known me to be off though, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> but yeah, like when it first started, we all kind of freaked out, and then it, you know, you, you regained whatever little bits of normalcy you can do. Like you know, like you're doing, plug yeah. yourself. You're doing uh, training sessions online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing my personal training online still with everybody, and it's working out well, and everybody's. Uh, 
you know, they're comfortable with it and they feel like they're getting their work out. And I think for a lot of people, it's just been a nice break in the day to sure. make them get off their ass. And, you know, <laughs> not that they're all sitting around, but, you know, a lot of them are working from home and they're sitting in their chair all day. And it's like, if I didn't have an appointment with them, they would just go from their work chair to the couch and then spend right, the rest right. of the night there. So at least at some point during the day, they have to go through 45 minutes to an hour of working out. Now, what about you? You're an active guy yourself. So, what have you been? What have you been doing to keep? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I do have a, I have a few weights at home, uh, some dumbbells and that type of stuff. So, I do some of that. Um, I've been. Uh, I live in a condo, so I've got six flights. So, I, I do the stairs of you know a few times a day. And since it's been, I've 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 walked every day, but since it's been a little bit warmer, I've started running and. and I have to say I'm way ahead of any running schedule I've ever done. And oh, yeah. you know, I've, done I've done marathons for 30 something years yeah. and I'm already up to, I did seven miles on Saturday. Yeah. So, and the only, the, the only problem with running right now is I, I found I have to drive my car somewhere and put water in the car and use that as a central base. So I can keep, you know, replenishing sure. the because there's no water around. So that's the only hiccup in running right now. What about places to go to the can? Like, what if you got to take a leak while you're out running? You don't. I mean, I'm not running a marathon, so there's really <laughs> taking a leak is not a problem. You know, and usually, go... even, well, even like when I run a marathon, if I, if I have to take a leak, it's maybe once or twice. Because ideally, when you're running, you're sweating enough off where it's, yeah. it just balances out. Oh, I don't know. I go for walks and, you know, I, I, they usually like the park I go to, they've got their own bathrooms and stuff. So, you know, if I got to stop, there's somewhere to go. Now everything's all shut down and everything. So right. now I got I to gotta make sure that the, the camel's hump is empty before I, before I hit the road, you know? Well, you know, I don't know if you know, but like in marathons, it's not, it's not uncommon to see runners veer off the course and just drop trowel right on the street. And hey, just, I have no problem with doing it. Other people are the ones that seem to have an issue with it. <laughs> be on the side of the road i'm perfectly fine with it you know i'll find a push i'll, I'll keep it quiet you know but i you know um so you know how uh how often are you getting out you know oh I'm, i go out every day i have to go out every day you know i i don't do well sitting at home the whole day i i, I quickly uh, get depressed and i start to lose my mind that this yeah. will never end so I've gotten out every day, at least for, you know, at least two, three mile walk a day, yeah. um, right, right from the beginning. And uh, sometimes I'll just go and find a park bench and just hang out for a while just to, just to veg, yeah. just to, you know, breathe. Um, but yeah, every day at least, you know, sometimes. Yeah that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing too, is I, if I can get that one walk in during the day, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. You know, I can, I can hang with being at home, but I mean, I do got to get out and move around. I get too anxious otherwise. So, yeah, yeah. It's always, uh, I mean, you know, your place is about the same size as mine. There's, there's only so much you can do. It's couch, bedroom, you know, and it's like, right. uh, you, yeah. know, you just need, you need to break. See, I wouldn't know because in all the time I've known you, you've never had me over to your place before. This is the most I've ever seen of your place. I can't well, count you, how you, many times you've been to my place, but, you know, I, well, I, I, I don't know. I can't, I, I've never once even heard like a, a hint that maybe you know I might be invited over or anything. All I get is this view on the <laughs> on the on the webcam here, but no you know, big. I, I don't take, I, 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 I don't take it personally or anything like that. It's not like we've been friends for like ten years or anything. You know. Well, no here it is. Now this this will be you know for posterity. This is going <laughs> up you know on the interwebs. You have an open invite to my place anytime you want. Anytime you want to do a, the uh, the Orals podcast from. Johnji's place, you are welcome to bring it up and let's that. go. You know, it's a small setup. I can bring my stuff out there and, and, and record out there sometime. Anytime you, you want. We should do it at least once for the, sure. you know. On uh, location, bring it up. Yeah. And then we could, we could go to Village Inn and have some pizza down the street. Very good yeah. pizza. Yeah. My treat. Uh, I'll, even, I'll even treat for the pizza, man. I'm opening up the wallet. Unbelievable. Well, then I'm I'm in. I'm, I'm in. This guy loves a chance at having some pizza. This guy's always, that's see, always, uh, it's always your go-to. That's always your go-to is like, hey, why don't we get pizza? Why don't we? Exactly. <laughs> well, if you go, if we go there, you'll see Paloma and me on the wall. It's our picture. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I do <laughs> want to. I do have to. <laughs> see. Um. 
so how is uh how's your family is is everyone you know because you got to have kind of have family scattered around well, i do yeah everybody's good we had a uh, we had an easter chat yesterday with everybody except for my dad obviously because he's he's not really computer you know literate at yeah. all i don't think uh, he's doing well he's 88 years old he's still walking around so you've, you know, got, really... you've got people in florida right uh, yeah my uh, my sister jean and her husband they're they're down in florida my other sister and her husband, Nancy, are in Arizona. I have a okay. niece in, on the south side of Chicago, and I have a niece and her husband in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah, we're everywhere. Right out. So what are, what, are the, what are the reports you're getting from them? I mean, like, do they all sound kind of like they're going through similar things, or is it different in some places? I know Florida is definitely uh, dealing with it differently than the rest of the country. But that, you know, that aside, what else? Anything? Well, well you know, in Florida and in Arizona, obviously the weather is much nicer. So that certainly would help. Um, yeah. in, in Colorado, my niece is in the healthcare industry. So yeah. she's, you know, she's on the front lines a lot with that stuff. And uh, it's a little scary for her, but she's doing well. Um, my, uh, her husband is a trainer like yourself. He's doing stuff online as well. Yeah. No competition though, you know. There's, there's room for you all and uh and big money and you know him yeah his little, they just bought a house in the uh, south suburbs and him and his, uh, his wife and his little girl is getting bigger every day but you know unfortunately we can't see them right now but everybody's all right i think my dad's the only one and like he just doesn't quite i mean he, it's not like he's you know out of it or anything but i don't think he understands exactly what's going on like for he'll keep, yeah. you know he'll keep saying like well why don't you come over and it's like well, I can't. It's not, yeah. you know, like you're 88 years old. You are massively high risk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's not worth it for me to come over, you know, to, to sit and chat and, and risk it, you know. Right. And yeah, that's kind of a tough conversation to have, you know, and make that call. But I mean, like even yesterday being uh, Easter Sunday, um, you know, my mom and I had to make the call that like I wasn't going to go over by her or anything like that. You know, she's not very old by any means, you know, she's, you know, but she's just old enough to be at more of a risk than like I would be, you know, and it's just, you know, why, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the point. Like my dad keeps saying, you know, do you really think it's that bad? I think it's kind of a little overblown ultimately, but why risk it? Right. You know, there's, there's no, there's no real urgency to, for me to come down there and what have lunch. You know, let's wait a couple months or whatever it takes, and then we'll, you know it'll be more relaxed and more enjoyable without the right. risk. Right. So, um, so with everything shut down now, we know it's gonna. I mean, you got to figure it's gonna be a while before we see another like Comic Con or C two E two or anything like that. I mean, I don't know what usually comes up in the fall. I think isn't Days of the Dead in the fall? Well, yeah. I mean, it's funny that you say that because just today the Squared Circle Expo, which is supposed to be at the end of May in Indianapolis, their debut event. We've talked about that before. Right. They they just announced that they're moving it to August twenty first, the weekend of August twenty first. Which oddly is the same weekend as Wiz Wizard World Chicago was scheduled. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're but, right. Yeah. You know, I, I I was already talking to one of my friends, you know, on the phone, and I my thought was that I understand that they probably had to lock in a date just to be sure they could always cancel it later, I guess. But I really don't think that's going to happen by August. No, I, I think you know, obviously we'll be out of our homes by then. You know, yeah. Some of the but social do something. But to do something that isn't quite necessary, you know, right. it's like we all love Wizard World and everything, but, you know, it's like I, I think we'll still be in a weaning down period where, like, they'll take the, the shackles off of some things but not others. And right, right. The, the last thing they're going to finally give the green light to is stuff like, you know, conventions like that and, and everything. So, Well, yeah, because especially – it's a lot, obviously it's a large gathering. So those things are going to be the last thing to be cleared. And it's a gathering where people are going to come from, especially for like a wizard world or, or the squared circle expo, people are going to be coming from everywhere for that. That's not a good recipe at this point in, you know, in time. Right. So, it's not just local people, people fly right. in all over the place to come to those events. So and it's not even just the, the get the, the attendees, it's the, the guests that they're going to have there. And if they, right. even if they did have the event, how is it going to be? Are, you know, so much of it involves 
you know, handing money, getting a picture, passing merchandise back and forth. Sure, yeah. How does that work and still be safe? Well, I think that's something we're going to see a lot of things changing as things go forward, because I can see them doing like, you know, you come in the door, them, you know, hitting you with the red laser and doing a temperature check on you or, you know, things like that. I mean, who knows how this is going to, you know, change the way that events like that take place, you know? I mean... When we went, uh, what was it we went to see Gutenberg at? Was that at Wizard World? That was Days of the Dead. Days of the Dead, okay. So even then, uh, Gutenberg was wearing rubber gloves, if you remember. Yeah. So, uh, I mean... And and let us not forget Kathleen Turner. She was well ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. (laughs) Did not weigh out. Yeah, you're lucky you stood as close to her. She let you in the (laughs) seat. I mean, even that shield next time. (laughs) Yes, that's true. But no, I mean, even Gutenberg, you know, he had the rubber gloves on, and I bet you that's going to be a pretty regular thing now with uh, with people. You know, I mean, they're probably already been, you know, using the hand sanitizer and all that. I've seen a lot of that already. Yeah. I mean, even before all this, you know. Right. Yeah. So I mean, people were already, you know, relatively conscious of it before, but you know, it's going to ramp up big time. Oh yeah. Um, but like, but, like, you know, like Wizard World, they're doing virtual conventions now on a much smaller scale. Like they just had the cast of Buffy all got together. Well, not all got together, but got, you know, all on camera. Yeah. Um, and it was broadcast on whatever they, I, I don't know, on their website, uh, Wizard World website or whatever. And they actually like, you know, Tommy Ellis would call in and, or text in or whatever. And they would show you the eight by 10 that they're signing to Tommy Ellis. And then oh, really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's oh. all for money, like everything so, else. Oh, yeah, sure. But, but yeah. It's, so it's not just, they're not just doing panels. They're actually still selling autograph photos right. and, and stuff like that. Do you get to, can you interact with them at all? Like, can you say, hi, it's nice to meet you. I've always wanted to, you know. At this or, point, or, no. Okay. Um, at this point, no, just because it's the first one. I'm sure at some point they'll, they'll get to that stage. Um, if even, did, just even you, talk of selfies, like the right. celebrity go there, you would, you know. Yeah, that would. Yeah, I don't know how that would work, but I mean, if they did start doing something like that, do you think that that might push certain people to just kind of start doing it on their own rather than have to go through a comic con or something like that? Because otherwise, their their comic con gets a cut for the booking and everything. But if you can just set up your own event, if people are, are, are accustomed to that being the way it is, you know, let's say if we're still, you know, four or five months into this, what's to stop some of these people from just saying, hey, you know, Saturday from 8 to 12, I'll be online. You know, you get in, you get in some sort of virtual line or something like that. You get like a minute or something with them. They sign the thing, you know. Oh, totally. I could totally see that happening. The strength for Wizard World or any convention that does it would be the strength in numbers where they could pull in the cast of Buffy or the cast of uh, you know Star Trek or or yeah. a bunch of people all at once where you, sure. you might even have rooms or different screens or whatever. Yeah, you could pull in the numbers and get one person like you know I might like three of the celebrities but not the rest but I'm still going to pay whatever initial fee there is. Sure. Whereas if, if it's just one celebrity, he's got to rely on just his base, but that base could be well enough for him to, to do it. Right. Well, that, you know, and that's, that's a very good point. Um, yeah. I mean, it's necessity is the mother of invention, you know? And so we're seeing a lot of new things come to, to light that we just have been bred out of the fact that we can't do it the way that we're used to. So, uh, I mean, like here you and I are having to do this, you know, and, so, but uh, we are going to get back on the URLs podcast. We are going to get a new episode of that thing out uh, soon. We're just going to have to do it this way. Got to make uh, Got to do with what you can do, you know. Yeah, but we'll make it work. Um, how are you been? Uh, how is like supplies and stuff like that up by you? I am. I am stocked. I've got yeah. everything I need. Um, I do go out for the occasional uh, bagel run, but I'll buy a bunch and then you know freeze them. Um, yeah. As you've seen on social media, I have had the occasional pizza. Yeah, but, so see, yeah. You're but I practice uh, cleanliness as much as possible with that. And other than that, I'm, I'm stocked and everything. I got water, I got Coke, I got enough canned foods and dry foods and whatever else. 
Well, I'm glad that you've got your Coke. That's a very important you that know, is important beverage to have in the house. I'm assuming it's the beverage, right? You're, of course. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> that okay. might make isolation maybe even a little more intense otherwise. So. Yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> want to see me on Coca-Cola. You barely want to see me on Coca-Cola, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not pretty. Well, all right, buddy. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad things are are going as well as they can for you there. Uh, let me ask you. We're gonna ask you uh, two questions here before I sure, let you go. Sure. All right. So, first one is, what would you say has been the hardest part of this whole thing for you so far? And, you know, it's it's the fear of the future. As you know, everyone complained before. Everyone had their complaints before about life and whatever. And now you look back and you go, "Wow, that like this is so much." I don't know, like worse is the correct word, but it's so much worse. People are going to be wearing masks. You're going to lose the, the intimacy. You're going to lose the personal touch with people. Right. And it's a fear of when will we get back to any sort of semblance. Yeah. We'll be able to leave our houses. Businesses will start opening up at some point in the near future. But you know, like we said, even um, even conventions, which is a, it's not just a big part of my life. It's a big part of everyone's life. You got the vendors. You got the, the, the artists. Everyone's yeah, that's where they make their money. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's affecting all those people. And it's people that I like, people that I see, wrestling events, things that where I see you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I miss seeing guys. Like, I, I actually miss seeing you, Tommy. Well, I figured that was a gift. I, that, that's not even worth mentioning, but I appreciate it. You know, I but, just, yeah, it's like that. I, you know, on the Orel's podcast, we've always talked about the fun times we had at Resistance. And you'd go to the show and you'd hug someone you haven't seen yeah. in a while. Yeah. How is that going to be affected? Is that because I even see in my building? I, I walk by in the lobby and people are, you know, like freaking out. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really think it's going to transmit if we just walk by within four feet of each other, right? But if people are afraid, and, and I guess there's good cause on some. I I get it. I just you know I because I get that too. I get people who get jumpy around you or whatever and. I try to keep my distance and, and, and I try, you know, you got to remember to not take it personally because, right, you right. know, they're, you know, you know, I, like you said, they have, a, they've got a good reason to. And if, you know, if they're a little more bothered by it than, than you are, then, you know, it's all right. There's, there's some people driving themselves crazy, you know, though, who can't stop watching the news and getting hourly updates and stuff. It's one thing I, 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 I don't listen to the radio a whole lot, but when I do lately, it's like every either half hour or hour, the stations are giving up like these, you know, regular That's COVID nice. updates. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, like let people forget about it for God's sakes, you know, for, I mean, give it, you know, do, do one every four hours or something like that. If you got to have it that often, but you know, not every half hour to an hour, you know, people are listening to music, trying to forget about it. And it's like, Oh, don't forget. Yeah. We're still out of pandemic. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. like, you know. So, all right, my my final question to you uh, is, what would you say has been uh, the best part about this, either for you personally or for the world in general? What's what's one good thing you can point to that has come of this? Well, I, I think the two two things are. I think everyone will appreciate life a little bit more. Will appreciate the freedoms they have and the simpler things in life. Yeah. And I think I think people will at least I hope at least at least initially it'll be this way and hopefully it lasts longer. But I think people will be a little kinder, a little a little more thoughtful, and maybe mm-hmm. a little more appreciative of everybody around yeah. them. And, and hopefully it, it, it hopefully it builds a little bit better world eventually. That's my hope. Yeah, I talked with, uh, I did an interview last night with my friend Adam, and he, uh, you know, he, he said something similar, but it was kind of more based around the, you know, the people who are all working right now and, you know, doing all the jobs that, you know, are making it possible for us to get our groceries and order food and things like that. And, you know, it's like right now, I'm, I'm glad that people are being more appreciative of them. I think people are going out of their way to be nicer to them, right. tip them better, things like that. But... My hope, and we'll see. You know, I, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't know if I'm pessimistic or skeptical, skeptical or whatever. But or both, actually, I hear you. You know, but coming out of this thing, you know, I just hope people remember this. You know, because it's real quick that like once everything goes back to normal, we'll just start taking those people for granted again. Right, right. And they're just the seven dollar an hour person at the jewel and whatever. You know. 
But it's like you got to remember that when the shit hit the fan and everyone needed those people, those people were there working, you know. And granted, those people don't have a lot of choice because they need to work and make money, but they're still there, you know. Right. I mean, no, exactly. They're they're still the ones who are in the line of fire. So um, that's my hope is that we walk away with you know just a little more appreciation for not only them but for each other and all the parts that everybody plays. Because like you said, even something. You can break down any business or industry and even something that might seem very simplistic or, or even unnecessary is like, you know, Comic-Con or something like that. There's a lot of people who are making their money for the year sometimes just on that one event, you know, or, or doing a few of those events a year, you know. And now if those are completely gone, what do you do, you know? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that was I, I had this talk way back in the beginning with one of my friends and he said, Oh, you know, big deal. You won't be able to go to comic cons. I said, but it's not just about me going to comic con and having fun. You know, it's a, you got to look at the bigger picture. Just so many factors and so many people's lives are affected, not from just going to buy a comic book or whatever, meeting your favorite star, but there's, it's a huge business and it, it employs a ton of people. Right. And that's why it's, that's why it's, uh, that's why they do it in different cities. And they, you know, like there's, if there wasn't money to be made on it, nobody would be doing it. You know? Right. So, exactly. Uh, you know, so, all right. Well, uh, thank you, John. It's good to, it's, I don't, it's, it's okay to see your face again. It's, it's, <laughs> good might be pushing it, but it's, well, it's, you, an, you it's an okay. You can always put a logo on over my face if you want. It's an, it's an okay, yeah, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll just dub that over it or something. Uh, but it's, it's an experience, I guess, to see your face again, man. Um, it's always well, good uh, to see you, Tommy. <laughs> but thank you, uh, thank you though, really for coming on and uh, just kind of letting us know how you're doing. When uh, when we get out the other end of this thing, we're gonna uh, do follow up interviews with everybody and see how it went and see where they're at and, and stuff. So we'll we will be checking back in with you and hopefully you'll be back a hundred percent on the beat. And uh, you'll be one of the first to know, my friend. All right. I hope so. And then in the meantime, we'll schedule our next uh, session to do uh, an episode of the Or Else podcast. And Sounds good, uh, good. we will continue our duty to society as podcast. And I look forward to an Or Else podcast right here. Yeah. Yeah. Where I've never been invited before. So. You are always invited. Yeah. I, yeah. And now, that go without yeah, saying? Took 10, years, took, took 10 years to hear that, but okay. Shouldn't they go right. without saying, do I have to invite my <laughs> sister to my place? Do I have to invite my father to my place? No. Uh, well, I didn't know I was held in the same regard as, as your, your closest family. So, you know. Well, then, well then, then shame on one of us for not knowing that <laughs> or, for not, or for not expressing that. But yes, you are one of my, my dearest friends, my friend. All right. Well, I'm back at you, buddy. All right, man. Well, you take care. We'll uh, we'll talk soon, and uh, uh, be well. Hang in there. You as well, my friend. All right, man. Peace out. See you later. All right. Well, that was that was John Robleski, aka John G of John G's Beat.com. You know, he, he's he's like a lot of people. You know, he's he's a little stir crazy. You know, he's he's trying to get by. You know, he's a he's a guy who's always on the move. You know, he really is. Whether it's for his work with Global Traveler or his work is uh, uh, being on the beat for John G's Beat.com. Um, you know, he's he's never one to be sitting still for very long. And then on top of that, he's a marathon runner. So, I mean, you know, obviously he's got a lot of physical angst that he's got to get out of the system. and He can go, you know. So to be locked into a cage, basically, is, is tough for that guy. So, uh, you know, but he's, you know, I think he's doing the best he can with it, like everybody else is. And uh, I appreciate him being on the show and sharing his feelings and thoughts on it. Uh, we have since, uh, having done that interview, we did record another episode of the or else podcast, which will shortly follow the release of this podcast. And, uh, we had a good time catching up on, on wrestling, on our pro related stuff and just kind of bullshitting in general. So, um, 
keep an eye out for that as that will be coming shortly after this uh, gets released. So uh, I still have a lot of people. I you know I, I know I keep telling you that, but it's the, it's the God's honest truth, and I think I keep bringing someone out about every two or three days. I'm trying to space them out a little bit because I actually have a few in the bank right now, but. Uh, a lot of interviews, and I appreciate so many people coming out to, you know, uh, share their story and be a part of this whole thing, you know. You know, right now it may not be a big deal, you know. Uh, maybe 10 years from now people can look back on some of these episodes and see what some people were going through, you know. Uh, my hope is always is that some people will watch these right now and say, well, I can relate to that person because I'm going through a similar situation. Or maybe they're going through their own situation, but they see somebody else in a different one and can appreciate the perspective that everybody is dealing with this uh, pandemic in a different way. Uh, I still consider myself very blessed um, to be in a situation where I'm financially sound, that I can ride this thing out right now, for now at least. You know, I mean, that could change really quick, but so far so good. Um, still able to work from home, doing, you know, via webcam and so on. And, um, you know, just being able to get out and do, you know, a walk and exercise at home and things like that. So, um, I, there's people who have it a thousand times worse than I do. So I really appreciate this position I'm in and, uh, my heart goes out to people who don't have it as good as I do because, um, you know, I, uh, a lesser man would fall under the, and, and crack under the weight of this, and I am that lesser man. So, <laughs> so there you go. Otherwise, uh, thank you again for tuning in and watching or listening to Checking In with Tommy Else. I've been your host. Who else but Tommy Else? And until next time, everybody be safe, be well, and I wish you nothing but peace and love.